Hi everyone. I'm from Orion Designs. I have a Facebook group. My address is listed here below, but we're not going to really get into that today. Uh, today I'm here to show you guys how to import simple images off of Google searches and use them to clean up those images to create your own layered designs using the tools available in Design Space. Um, most people don't realize that there are uh, are simpler ways in which you can get a better outcome for what you're trying to do um, and it's going to save you a lot of time in the long run. So today we're going to talk about two images that I have listed here on the cover sheet. Um, Hello Kitty and the Hornet on the right. Um, the Hornet and Hello Kitty are both considered simple JPEG images and both look like they would be relatively easy to clean up. Um, but actually, you have to make a different adjustment uh, for one of those two images. So let's head over to Design Space where I'm going to show you how to import those images up and what we need to do to make sure that they turn out to be great cut images. Okay, once you're in Design Space Canvas, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to Upload. If you're using the app that's at the bottom, there's a little cloud that looks just like the same symbol and it says upload on it. Once we get there, we're going to upload an image. And then we're going to click browse. That's going to take us to the files on your computer. Now I have a ton of folders and a ton of images. So sometimes I find that it's much easier for me to search for an image if I know what the name is by clicking the search box and then the name of it and it'll bring up some options for me. And I don't have to have the full name, I can just type in kit if I wanted to. And it's gonna bring up all the options that are listed with kit. Okay, now that I have my Hello Kitty imported into Design Space, I need to select what kind of image this is. And at first look, you might go, hmm, well, high contrast colors and transparent monogram backgrounds simple details and colors with good contrast well that's what this looks like but that's really not what we're going to do so let me break this down since this video is focusing on cut files we only want to select simple image and the reason being is because these two are actually so you can retain the color of your image to use it for example a print and cut Print and Cut allows you to take an image and send that image to your printer through Design Space and then print that off on whatever material you want to print it off, whether it's cardstock, printable HTV, or vinyl. All of them have printable options available. We're not focused on that. The difference between these two is that a moderate level would be something like this where it's more flat in color, there's not really shadowing to the image. That would be a moderate complex uh, colored image. Complex images have blended colors, shadows, basically a photograph. So anything that's really high res uh, is going to be a complex image. Simple images are basic simple and right now the only thing we're concerned about is getting a great outline so that we can use that as our template to build a layered design later on. So we're going to select simple and continue from there. So just remember if you're going to do a cut file it's always going to be, sorry about the pop-up, it's always going to be um, simple if you're going to do a cut file. Now, let's talk about the tools here. This is the cleanup area of Design Space. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in my image. It's always a good practice to zoom in and zoom out so that you can get into the little areas to clean them up. If you make a mistake, there's an undo button right here. Um, let's talk about these three options right here. When you come in there and you put your uh, mouse onto the image, it turns into crosshairs. That is actually this tool right here, Select and Erase Tool. If I were to click my mouse button in here, I would remove the background. If I use this tool, which says Erase, it's going to bring up a slider down here. This allows me to 
size the circle that I want to use. I can make it bigger and smaller depending on what my needs are for that particular image. If I use that, I can do the same thing. I can erase areas of my design simply by um, holding my mouse button down and dragging this over the top of it. Okay, but that's not what we want to do. So I'm going to go back and do the select and around, select and erase tool. Underneath here, there is a button that says advanced options. You always, always, always want to go to advanced options first. And let me explain why. Because when we make a cut file, the only thing that we're really interested in is making sure that we have a good outline to cut. So we want to make sure our image has this great solid black outline. Make sure your outline is thicker um, than, you know, thinner. Because if it's too thin, it's going to be next to impossible to cut or for it to actually stick because there's not enough surface area for you to get a good um, application to it to stick. So stay away from things that have really super thin lines. Okay, so under advanced options, we have two options below that. We have color tolerance. Now, I'm not going to get into the ins and outs of that, but I'm going to give you a number. Remember this number, 50 or 150. Both of those are kind of the middle balance of color tolerance, and that's where we want things to be. Why do we do this? Well, we do this for two reasons. JPEGs, regardless if they are a black and white or a colored image, always come in uh, pixelated with a blend of colors. So a true black and white image that looks like black and white to us really isn't black and white. There are various shades of white, various shades of black, and even some gray mixed into it. And you can't really see them with a the naked eye. But if you put them into a design program and zoom in, that picture blows up. You can actually see the gradients between one shade of white to the other shade of white. And that kind of gets confusing for programs like Design Space. So the most important thing is, is we wanted to reduce the number of colors that we're working with because we're going to actually make our own colored layers on the canvas using the contour tool later. All right, so for this image, we're going to reduce this down to two colors. Whoa, that changed it a lot. Really, it's okay because the only thing we're concerned about is the outline. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that our select and erase tool is still working. We're going to click on the outside, and if you preview it, you will see we don't have and if you haven't seen them yet, what can happen if you don't use the advanced options is there may be little speckles of what look like color. And if you select off, there's like nothing on the screen. But when you set preview, there is. Or you see these little offshoot kind of hairy things that stick off of the image. That's where the one color of white blended into another color of white is different. And it was so different that it just stayed there. So if we don't reduce our colors, that's what can happen. You can be left with all these little speckles and stuff. And if you'll notice, my shadow down here below Hello Kitty is now gone. And so is that little box that was in the corner because I reduced the colors in my image. All right. So we're going to go ahead and select all the rest of the pink areas in this design. The other key thing to remember about images is to make sure that your images have good open areas. If they're really super, super tiny areas, you may not want to select those in this phase. You may want to keep them deselected so that you're not worried about your vinyl snagging or your cardstock um, not cutting correctly. Because if the image is too small and you're trying to cut a small image, it's going to cause a snag or drag across that material as your uh, blade tries to cut that little tiny space. Even if you have that, that image enlarged enough, if it's still a really tiny space, your 
the design space program is designed to look at the lines. So that's what it's following. And it doesn't matter what size the line is, just that it's a line. So it can't differentiate between smaller lines and bigger lines. It's just following a line. So you need to make sure that you make good choices when you're getting rid of areas in your cleanup area. And you'll see more of that with the next image. It's a little bit different, and we have to do it a little bit different. And I'll show you why here in a minute. Okay, so now that we have that all cleaned up, we're going to do a preview. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in even more because I know from playing with this image that I have a couple of areas. I have this little scraggly piece right here. So I am going to go back in and grab my erase tool. And I found that this works better than trying to click in that open area. For some reason, it just won't grab it. And then I can preview it again. And I smooth that out some. All right. I'm going to grab my select and wand tool again, and I'm going to come back in right in this area by the bear's nose, and I'm going to click in and around this area here to kind of widen this up. And again, this is not a, a graphics program, so it's very limited in what it can and can't do. So I think that we're good to go. The rest of the design looks pretty good. We can zoom back out. And then we're going to go ahead and continue. Then we're going to save this image as a cut file. All right. I already have this image saved as a cut file, so I'm not going to resave it. As you can see, I'm already, already way ahead, so I just left it there. Okay, so import. I'm going to import the... Um, Hornet again. So hit upload, then browse. That's going to take you to your computer. You're going to go ahead and type in the Hornet. And you're going to find the image that you want. Okay. Same process. More colors to this image. Looks a little bit different. But very similar because it has a good outline. It's got very you know, muted colors, there's no bleeding, so it looks like Hello Kitty, almost. We're going to select Simple because we're only working with cut files. Remember the other two for print cut. I have a lot of excess around this image, so I am going to go ahead and I'm going to crop this. Up to the top left next to the eraser is the crop tool. You want to start on the top corner, top left corner of your image where you want this to cut down at, and you're going to drag a box around. And once you get to the bottom corner and release, it will go ahead and resize your image for you. Now we're ready to go ahead and do what we did before. First, go back to the Select and Race tool, click Advanced Options, and we're going to reset our tolerance to 50. We're going to click in Modify Colors. And now what I want you to do is I want you to pay particular attention to all the blue in this design, particularly up here at the head. When I select two like it did with Hello Kitty, something else different happens with this image. And that's the reason why I'm showing it to you today, because I want you to make sure that if you run across an issue like this, you know how to fix it. Okay, so if you notice, my image that had the blue in it no longer has blue. It's reduced down to two colors. Actually, I think it's closer to three, but the program says two. All right. So I lost the ability to make a blue layer with this particular image because it turned the blue to black. And I don't want to do that. I want to still be able to do the blue layer. So what I need to do is I need to go back and unmodify this. Send it back to the original. We're going to go ahead and crop this down again. Drag over, release. Select and erase. Now, the one thing I want to do is I want to count how many colors are in my design. I have black, that's one. Blue, that's two. White for the eyes and C, that's three. And yellow for everything else. That's four colors. So I'm going to go ahead and select four colors in my image. 
And now you'll see that all my blue is retained in the image. The background has changed some, which is going to help because that's going to reduce those outside pixels. So hopefully we won't see any of those little scraggly little hairs on the design or any miscellaneous uh, dots anywhere when we preview it. And now we can go in and select the different areas to remove the color in those areas just like we did with Hello Kitty. Okay, now before I go any further, I do want to zoom in to show you a couple of things. When you're cleaning up, remember I said if it's a really small tight area, we want to make sure that we make a good choice before we decide to clean an area up. So when I preview this, I see that this line, it looks perfectly fine. It does come to a, a narrow point, but a narrow point is, is not as bad as a narrow, completely narrow space. What's even worse are areas like this, because this is really, really tight and small up here and up here and if I don't clean that up will it take away from what the overall look of the design is no it won't so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave those areas that are in yellow except for this one I'm going to clean this one up I know I can get in here and get this a little bit cleaner so I'm going to zoom in but the other areas that I have left yellow, I'm going to go ahead and leave yellow. They're not going to stay yellow because obviously when you save it as a cut file, it only saves it as a black outline. So I'm just going to go clean that area up and we're going to check it. I think I can get in there a little bit more. as close as possible. There is a little scraggly line right here. It does not affect the cut. I know because this is an image I've worked with with another person so it is perfectly fine. So I think that's as good as we can get it. And then we continue on. Save it as a cut file and we're done. All right, now once we have it saved, it's going to show up in our uploaded image area. And I'm going to go ahead and select them, which is going to put a green box around it. It's also going to show those images here. So if I accidentally select more than one, I can click on that image or I can click on the box or the circle down below to deselect it. And then I'm going to insert my images onto my canvas. Click off to the side. And there's both of our images. They look really good. See how easy that was? So just remember, simple image is step one. Step two, advanced features. Select two to begin with. If it run into a problem, go back in and change it to unmodified to reset your image. Then count your number of colors, main colors that you have. Um, and then set that and then start removing everything except for the outlines. Simple, huh? Okay, so let's talk about how do we create our own layered image of Hello Kitty. Yay! There's my Hello Kitty. I'm going to get rid of him as we don't need him up here today. Okay, so here's an example of Hello Kitty and I, I decided I like purple instead of pink today, so that's how I made it. This uh, project has um, how many? One for the black layers. One, two, three, four. So this is a way you can make your own layered, your own layered SVG or your own layered um, vinyl decals. This is the way you do it, guys. All right, so. I'm going to go ahead and hide my sample again, and we're going to create our own. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our item. And if you're on the desktop, this can be done one of two ways. If you right click, you can hit duplicate. Or up here at the top right, you can hit duplicate. And then you're going to go down to the bottom for contour. And that's going to pull your image into a screen like this. What this does is it shows you every single piece, including the negative spaces of an image. So it actually allows you to fill that image in. Now the first thing we want to do is create a, a good base for an image. So if you're wanting to do a layered project, especially for beginners, I recommend you find an image that has a solid outline that goes all the way around the image and no open spaces. Um, because then that will allow you to create a good base image for your layered projects. How do we get that? Well, over here on the layers panel of the contour area, it shows all of our pieces here. And I can see at the top there is one that looks like a silhouette of my Hello Kitty. So that is all the pieces selected. And when they're selected, they are darker in color and white over here. If I hide my items, all of my contours, it leaves me with just the base image. So that's our first layer. And click off the X and there we go. Now I can change that color to anything I want. As long as there's a box around the item, guys, you can select it and change the colors on them. Now let me show you a little trick. Instead of having to move things here or move things there, there's an easier way to do it. You can either do it by selecting them on the layers panel or clicking on the actual items itself. They both do the same thing. But if you hold your shift key down, click one item, and click the other item, it does the same thing. Now watch. If I do this on the layers panel, if I click one, it highlights the first one. Hold my shift key down. Click the second one, and it highlights both of them. Now we're going to go over to the top where it says align. We're going to center horizontally and center vertically. There we go. Now I know that I have two images that fit perfectly together, that line up perfectly together, and are going to make a great product once I'm done. Now, because I, I want to see the outline and I need to select it for other layers, I'm going to go ahead and send my white to the back. So what I did was I clicked off to the side, then I clicked on the top. Once they're stacked together, it's only going to select the top layer of what you have stacked. Right click, I'm going to hit send to the back. You can also do the send to the back, send to the forward, up here where it says arrange. Not sure where that's on the app, guys. I think it's down in the bottom under the edit options, but I'm not sure. Okay, so I can move forward, move it backwards, and it's only going to show me what options are available for the image that I have selected. And right now I have the top image selected, so we're good to go. Okay, now that I have those together, I'm going to go ahead and move that over. And I'm going to click on my Hello Kitty. You could see in the layers panel that only the top layer is selected. We're going to go ahead and duplicate it one more time. So I have two more times of duplicating. Well, I have one more time after this of duplicating this particular layer because the first one I'm going to go ahead and make the teddy bear. And then the second one I'm going to do the bow, the nose, and the dress. Okay, and excuse me if I twist this up because sometimes I forget which way is which when it comes to contour, but that's okay because if you make a mistake, it can easily be fixed. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're not going to go down here and hide all of our contours because for me that just, I don't know, my brain doesn't work right when it comes to that. So we're going to start by selecting the items that we don't want to see. And then 
we'll leave these on. I'm also going to deselect the base layer because we don't want those. Sometimes these little interior pieces, they can be boogers. They just don't want to deselect. So that's where we go when we hunt them down inside design space. So there's the head. Or, sorry, design space. Inside contour, the layers panel. There's our ears. So here, I believe, is a button. So if you click on it and it's not the right one, just click back off. Not a big deal. I'm looking for that nose. So we have a nose that looks like that. There we go. And now we're going to click off. And there's our bear. Now we can go up to the color and select what color we want. And here's our next layer. Awesome. And we're going to click the top layer again and hit duplicate and hit contour. And this time we're going to, oops, sorry, this time we're going to focus on the um, We're going to focus on the nose, which is the inside of the nose, not the outside of the nose. So we've got to get one highlighted. So we're going to turn everything off that we don't want. And I want the I want the interior button to show, but not the exterior button. So this is the one that's tricky. Sometimes if you zoom in, you can have better look. You can have better luck with it. Um, it just it's it's really sensitive on how it catches. So there's the outside. There's the outside. So the inside is on. The outside is off. We're gonna just check. So there's the the dress. And I want the bear's head. Here's one of the ribbon sides, the other ribbon side. Center of the ribbon. I get rid of one of the eyes. We want to leave the buttons on, so that's the button. This is the nose. Here's these little side pieces in the things I think we're good okay and just like you saw me do if I mess up and I forget to click on an item or I think I clicked on it and it didn't click you can always go back into contour and play around with it till you get your image the way you want it to be now I can go over here and select what color I want and I can set that down inside my design and I'm going to move this to the back. Don't send it to the back because we have that white layer in the back. So we're going to move it to the back until we see our front layer up here. Or you could just click the front layer and move it to the front. Either way works. Okay, guys. So there we go. There is our layer design. So now we have, let me show you my sample from earlier. And we're going to move these layers over. So those layer, that's the top layer. Here's the second layer, third layer, and let me zoom out. And here's our bottom layer. And there we go, guys. Pretty easy, huh? So don't get yourself frustrated if you are struggling with trying to get a piece to work or not work. Again, if your project has a lot of design detail to it, it could take a while to do some of these steps. Um, but if you remember the basics of uploading a design, if you're doing a cut image, it's always simple. If you're going to clean up an image, then you 
set your advanced features first. Always start with two, and if it doesn't work out, you go back. So keep an eye on your screen because if you lose part of your design, it's going to look different than the one that you're importing and want to use. So it's totally up to you as to how you make your projects work for you, but these are the basic tools to get you to make your own layered designs. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, please feel, to, feel free to leave them for me. Um, thank you guys so much for checking this out. Bye.